It was about, uh, as you say, 10 to 2 in the morning, on the early morning of the Thursday morning of the 26th of October, 1978. We received a call from a local uh, resident here in Clarenville that uh, there was something flying in the sky and that it uh, appeared to be a UFO. Uh, at the time, uh, I was on the other side of Clarenville. I couldn't uh, see the object, so I patrolled down to what we call Marine Drive. And uh, I stopped the police car uh, where the resident was standing on the road with his binoculars and uh, looked up into the sky and noticed a oval-like uh, object coming from the west heading east uh, in, just across the sky here in Clarenville. Now it appeared to me at the time that the object was uh, anywhere approximately probably 2,000 to 3,000 feet in altitude and uh, it, its distance from Clarenville is approximately about a half a mile, no more than that. Now at this time my first impression I thought it might have been a jet flying overhead on, uh, until the resident uh, passed me his binoculars and asked me to take a clo closer look, which I did. And uh, at this time I could see blue flashing lights. And now I still wasn't sure uh, the identity of the object. Uh, I thought to myself it could have still been an airplane, so I patrolled to the detachment office and obtained a telescope that we have here. Now the magnification of this telescope is uh, from 15x to 60x range. It has a zoom lens. Now I uh, left the detachment office and I went down to a marine drive where the, uh, the complainant was still there observing this object. The object at this time had stopped moving and it was just hovering just on the uh, <coughs> east, the northeast coast of Random Island. I watched the object again to see if it was going to move anymore and it didn't so I set up uh, my tripod that we use for the telescope, mounted the telescope and, to, and observed the uh, object at the 15x range. Now as uh, I observed in this range it was much more powerful than the, your normal binoculars that uh, people buy in your local stores. Uh, at this time I noticed distinctly the blue flashing lights were on each side of the object and there was one red one on the top and it appeared to be in the middle of the the object itself. Now <clears throat> I was a bit bewildered at first as to what it was, I was very astonished, so I zoomed in the object to take a closer look. Now at this time the uh, the object was filled out the whole uh, circular telescope, you know, the end of your telescope, circular. Well it filled out completely and I had to focus a bit and uh, the bottom half of the uh, object was completely illuminated by some sort of light. Now I don't, I couldn't see where the light was coming from. Uh, it didn't seem to be like a, a reflection, it seemed like a source of light. Now the uh, blue light, uh, the blue light in question was flashing uh, very, very rapidly. Uh, it's the fastest flashing light I've ever seen on any police vehicle or any aircraft. And uh, the vehicle turned, the object turned around and I noticed that it also had a blue light on the other side as well. And it too was flashing at a very rapid speed. So uh, I watched it at maximum range and uh, I zeroed in on the red light on top to see if I can make out what it was. Now this red light was combined of a red and a white light so you have a flashing red and white together you know, uh, you'd have red, white, red, white, etc. This light as well was still flashing quite rapidly. Uh, and uh, I observed the tail of the, of the object it was an oval shape uh, and it also had a small fin like an airplane, a uh, triangular shape, but it was much smaller, more, it was stubbier, like it didn't seem like it would be any use of, you know, to any aircraft that, uh, you know, known to man. Uh, the vehicle stayed there for approximately an hour and a half without moving. Uh, then it started to 
turn from side to side and it would move up and move down sideways back and forth and then it proceeded to uh, it proceeded then to uh, leave the Clarenville area <clears throat> at first it uh, started off very very slowly it uh, appeared to be dry, uh, driving probably at a, an air speed of a jet a normal jet no faster uh, so I left uh, the lower row there <clears throat> in Clarenville, called Marine Drive. Came back to the office. I set up the telescope here in this office and and, uh, and watched it leave the area. And just as a split second, the vehicle disappeared. Now, I can't say whether uh, I really, myself, I don't even know what, what the object was, but uh, I was positive it definitely was not a star. In fact, uh, uh, I did try to zoom in the brightest star just to be on the safe side before I did make any type of an official report. And uh, this proved negative. There was no way I could zoom in a star at this range. Uh, I haven't seen the object since. We have had many reports uh, about the object been seen lately, but they've been proved, uh, been proved negative. <clears throat> Well, that's all I can tell you right now, Mr. Strong, about the, the object. The constable, would you care to, to give us an opinion of how big the object might have been, how long it might have been, or how high it might have been? Well, the size appeared to me, uh, uh, I don't know if you noticed the uh, 737 Boeings that the EPA used. It was a little bit larger than that, but a little smaller than your DC-8. It was about in the middle there somewhere. A couple of hundred feet? Yes, yes. And how high would it be? Possibly? It was approximately uh, two to three thousand feet. And there was no wings. It was just simply a <clears throat> no, the, no, no. The sky was clear. Uh, there wasn't a cloud in the sky. Would you mind holding up the the drawing you did of the object for the cameras, <clears throat> Constable? Yes. This is just a a rough a rough sketch off the uh, the object. And you notice here that this is the tail that uh, I mentioned earlier. And it's a very small tail. Now, the blue flashing lights, there was one on this side here and one on the other side of the vehicle, and the red light was approximately here. And, uh, and it turned around as you watched it. <clears throat> yes, it, uh, well, first I viewed it from this side, and then it turned face on to me. And uh, then it turned to the other side. I could see the other light flashing, and then it turned back on to me again. To, from the, uh, the, just uh, slowly turning? Just slowly, yes. It wasn't a quick movement. And then it made quick movements up and down, and then back and forth this way. And uh, always returning to the same position where it was before. Now, the structure, I couldn't tell what the structure was, but I could plainly see there was no windows of any type on the object, uh, I couldn't see any openings where a door would be or anything like that. But the uh, it was uh, it was obvious that it was metallic structure. But the uh, what type of metal I wouldn't care to guess. But it, it wasn't. Uh, it didn't seem like aluminum where aluminum shines. This was like a dull metal. Poor, looked a uh, very porous dull metal. There was no markings. None whatsoever. No. No. And the light, the light lower part that showed the light <clears throat> was the sort of the bottom. This bottom part here was all this bottom half totally here. Totally a glow. Totally a glow. Yes. And as I focused the, uh, the zoom to uh, maximum, the light was that intense that uh, it was hard to see. You know, through the telescope, it was that intense it would almost hurt your eyes. Uh, but at a distance, with the naked eye, you could plainly see this glow, and then the lights over top of it. Was it gray color, would you say? The metal appeared to be a grayish color. It, it appeared to be a, a very dense, he, well, it appeared to be like a heavy metal, not not like an air, interplane metal or aluminum. And, and although the <coughs> light was a flashing on the side, there was no indication of a porthole or a window. No, just the, the light. I, I couldn't see that clear what the light was housed in or, or how it was flashing. And, the, of course, the couple who had called you in the first case to, to bring about the, uh, the sighting, they were seeing it. They were witnesses to it anyway. Oh, yes, yes. And they had no doubts. <clears throat> no, uh, well, the, uh, the husband did look through the telescope with me at the time 
when I had it set up down on the uh, Marine Drive. And seeing a man in his, in his mid 40s or what? Yes, was, I would say, yes. And a resident of Clarenceville? Yes, yes. And this had, there has been, though, other times when the vehicle, a similar vehicle like this, had been seen in this area? Well, uh, the resident uh, called a week prior to that and stated that the object was there. And uh, he stated to me this night that this, this was the same object that he'd seen the week before although uh, no members of our detachment uh, did observe it. I understand there's a, a radio man in town who has also seen an object like this. I understood from the uh, sergeant. Well, I don't know anything about that. No, no, I don't know anything about that. Is there anything else you'd like to say, Constable? Because I think this is rather a historical mm -hmm. film we're doing for the archives. It's, a, it's certainly the most uh, incredible discovery, I think, as we discover a, a vehicle that's not a helicopter, obviously, because that's the only thing could hold her of this, in this way. Well, if it was a helicopter, I, uh, with the magnification I had, I would have plainly seen the, the uh, props rotating. Uh, a normal aircraft has a red light above the, uh, <coughs> the fuselage and, and as well on the bottom, but these are only used during takeoff and landing, so it's very seldom you see them operating while in flight. Uh, usually a jet is much higher than what this object was. This was just barely above the horizon. Was it was it actually over Random Mile itself? Yes, it appeared to be uh, around the district of Weybridge in Elliot's Cove, which is uh, across the water here is uh, approximately a half a mile. It's just over that? Yes. So it's possible that people in, in that area might have seen it? Oh yes, I'm surprised that we haven't received more reports than we did. Uh, like I say, it was uh, it was in the middle of the week, of course, and uh, uh, it was there until approximately, uh, I believe, 3.30 before it left. We're talking in the morning. October 26, 1978. That's right, yes. It was a normal reaction uh, from any human being. Uh, you would say, well, anybody's talking about a flying saucer or a UFO, well, it's uh, a lot of mumble-jumble. Uh, I say probably a lot of people here in Newfoundland don't believe these things, but... Uh, it uh, really changed my outlook of the uh, of this situation since I did cite this object. Uh, like I say, Mr. Sterling, I still can't say what it was, uh, what kind of a vehicle or it was, or or whatever kind of an aircraft. But uh, it certainly changed my outlook on the uh, situation. I, I always uh, have been a non-believer in these things before. But it really changed my opinion after seeing this thing. Well, you, would I, would you say now you now believe there is such a thing as a UFO? Well, uh, it appeared. Well, after what I've seen, I, I suppose I wouldn't be able to say uh, no. I don't believe him. I'd have to say yes. There was no wings on it. And there was no sign of a of propellers or jet <coughs> engines. There was nothing there that I could see was holding that thing in the air, other than this small little tail at the rear end. But I, like I said, I couldn't see how that had any use to you know. A pyramid. To, uh, pyramid shaped. Yeah, right, yeah. Of course, under the theories, the pyramid was uh, an anti-gravitational engine, and that they reversed the gravity, and that's how, that's one of the theories they have on these, on these uh, vehicles. But it means that there's a technology we don't know about somewhere in the, in the cosmos. I mean, there's, there's, in other words, we, we've seen a vehicle that uh, is contrary to any you know exists in the world. Yes, well, I I've, uh, take up airplane building as a hobby myself. I've known uh, I've known just about every aircraft ever built, uh, but this is the first one of this design that I've ever seen or even read about. And uh, of course, it's impossible to 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 estimate how big it was, other than it was between those two planes you mentioned. But it's, it would certainly been over 100 or 200 feet long. Oh, yes, definitely, yes. <clears throat> so a vehicle 200 feet long and 30 or 40 feet high, hovering for over an hour and a half under telescope observation, is certainly something that's beyond our present understanding of aerodynamics. And uh, I can well understand the... Uh, it must have been... After you'd seen it, after you start thinking and being asked about it, it must have really been a strange sensation. Well, it was. Uh, my first uh, glimpse of it uh, 
like I said before, I was very bewildered. And then after looking into the uh, <clears throat> the other witnesses' uh, binoculars, I was even more amazed. But then after I observed it through a telescope, I didn't know what to think to myself. I, you know, I said, "What am I looking at? You know, is it a star?" And, and so this is when I went ahead and focused in the, the brightest star I could find. And uh, I said, "No, it's not a star." But these lights is what really threw me off. It's not what I expected to see in a UFO. I thought you'd just see a white light, and that you know this is all there was to it. A blue, a blue and a red and white, a blue on each side and a red and white, fast, and each all of them were flickering on and off at a, at a tremendous speed. Very tremendous speed, yes. It was almost like the speed of what we have those uh, those white lights they use in these rock and roll groups, where it uh, distorts the. Uh, Vision, if you're if you're ever in the building at the time, it was it was fa it was flashing almost as fast as, the, as these would flash. But uh, just the same, I couldn't tell if it was revolving, but it appeared to me it was just going off and on. It but, you, but you couldn't see where it was coming from. The in, in other words, there was no window, so there must have been a tiny, very tiny opening where the lights were coming. <clears throat> yes. Yes. And we're talking to Constable Jim Blackwood of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police Detachment in Clarenville, Newfoundland. And we've just heard described to you a sighting that was seen at 1.50 a.m. on the morning of the 26th of October, 1978. As we close this verification from the RCMP detachment, we'd like to thank Chief Inspector Farr and uh, his staff for allowing us permission to have this interview. We'd like to thank very much the sergeant here in charge, and we'd like to thank you, Constable Jack Jim Blackwood, for your cooperation. We feel it's a very historical film that we put in the in the archives. Uh, this sighting in Newfoundland.